what is the assessment for Peruvian competitiveness on yes. the mining industry? So that so that, uh, that is that is a the number one question <coughs> every every country I ever asks. So there's the same country actually in Brazil, and um, uh, and what, what I would what I would say to that is it, it's not necessarily about the the level of taxation. I mean th th these things are issues, of course. Uh, the issue is not about the, the quantum of the, the money that is being taxed. The issue is about certainty. So uh, what mining companies want is, it's, is certainty in terms of, because they're actually doing 25 year investment life cycles. You know, these are long term life cycles. They need certainty to make their investment decisions. When certainty is changed because of uh, mining tax regimes are changed, uh, taxation is, is increased, uh, they may well, for example, decide to put in an environmental levy, a carbon tax levy, but they're all kind of in the same area. That all increase, that, that all leads to uncertainty, and, uh, and therefore we have a global investment mining market, of course, and people then will invest less in one country and more in another, perhaps. I, I, from, from the discussion that I was having with the society before, and from my own sort of research and my, my colleagues, it appears to be that in Peru, there's been a lot of work done in terms of the, the mining sector working closely with the government sector. Gerardo, you, you would agree, Carla? Yeah? Uh, and, and to that end, I think there is a, a lot more certainty, therefore, as a result, uh, which therefore is then a very good thing, therefore, in terms of uh, improving investment. Because I, I was seeing some of the figures there around the quantum of proven investment potential, which is, which is very, very large. I, I know that maybe in terms of investment as opposed to say Chile, you know, Peruvian investment is still slightly more expensive, but we're looking at, you know, just in the area of well, one or two percent or the like. These are not material things. The issue is the certainty. A country in terms of investment in a, in a place like a Peru, they look in terms of the lens they use is risk, for example. You know, how do you, uh, the risk is in many things. Risk is in terms of political risk, Risk can be also be in terms of economic risk, in terms of stability. Risk can also be in terms of um, uh, environmental risk and the like. So there's a, there are a number of elements looking in terms of risk. What's, what's interesting there is the, um, how, for example, South America in the last you know, five to six years has actually increased the in, in terms of stability and therefore uh, um, increased their position in terms of the country risk um, um, matrices and the like. So basically it has become less risky to invest in South America in certain economies in South America, of course. The, and it's interesting when you look at the, the top four uh, countries in the world in terms of you know, country risk investment, you know, you, you've got the likes of Australia and Canada, of course, being number one and number two, as you might imagine in terms of stability. Though there have been issues there, of course, with tax and the like in Australia, as we all know. However, when you get to like three and four, you're looking at countries, uh, three, four, and five, you're looking at countries such as Chile, Brazil, and Peru. So they're right up there in the top five in terms of um, uh, um, the best around country risk. But in the end, I mean, costs are really the only key variable that a lot of the mining companies can really um, alter because they're actually price takers in reality. So that's where they have to really manage their costs. And the problem that is in the market is that there has been an escalation in terms of its cost inflation, there's been an escalation in terms of wage inflation, and those are realities. And we're also in a market where, well, let's talk about talent, one of the, the biggest issues around. Um, people don't want to go work in the remote locations as well. So, so the same that we have demand for people to do the projects, we have got demand for people to go and work in remote locations for these mines. We, we talked about some of these uh, different locations. We also have the issue of people don't want to go and work there. The, the generation, generation Z or Generation Y, whatever we're up to now, they don't want to work in mines. They actually want to work in uh, forensic pathology. They want to work as, um, uh, they want to work in main urban centers, such as Alima, or Santiago. Um, and this is a major issue. You, you look at the, the numbers of mining graduates coming out of, mining engineering graduates coming out of the universities, and I've seen some studies on that, in Chile, Peru, Brazil and the like. We are actually looking at hundreds of people coming out, but the demand is for thousands. People are retiring in their thousands. Uh, it's Canada, yeah, in the next 10 years, Canada 
will have a uh, retired workforce, I think it's around $100,000, so 100,000 people for the mining sector, and they're not being replaced. So they're retiring in their thousands and they're being replaced in their hundreds. It's, it's, uh, this is a major issue. The trend that we're seeing is that we are expecting a number of these projects to overrun. So you know, we say the project is going to be two to three billion, the reality is it will be five to six billion. But I think, I think the, the message I would give people, and not just in Peru by the way, is I think people have got to realise that this is not just a once in a generation boom. This is not a once in a five year boom. This is a once in a hundred year boom. Yeah, this is a, we are actually living in historical times here. And people need to uh, think strategically as well in terms of their responses uh, to the issues that they are facing in the marketplace. Yes, we have volatility in the marketplace, and we are seeing that in the last few weeks, the last few months. Volatility, you could say, is the new certainty right now. However, what people really, I would suggest, should focus on is the medium to long term here in terms of the strength of the fundamentals that are in the market and doing the right things right. The issue there is that how do you actually spend uh, the profits from this boom in a sustainable way that you don't just fritter away um, this, 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 um, the great results of what you're doing at the moment. And that is the, the number one priority for a lot of organisers, a lot of, sort of, a lot of countries that are in the same situation to Peru, for Indonesia, for Chile, for Australia. You know, when things change, how do we make sure that we are not left in a position where our country is stranded.